how do you fix the wealth gap? How do you, how do you fix the income gap that has been widening during the pandemic, which is just crazy to think about, but it has been widening, okay? And I, I've got a theory I'll, I'm gonna share with you in a second, but, but set, a, set aside that theory. How do we fix it? How do we solve it? How do we solve the growing wealth gap that is, you know, potentially threatens the long term of our economy? Well, I got three ideas. I'm gonna share those coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. A couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, uh, a cohort of, not Corhorn, a cohort of Amazon employees have been pushing and pushing and pushing and, and, uh, and trying to unionize. And they went to a vote in Alabama. And I'm surprised, although I didn't follow it closely, surprised that it, it failed. I actually thought with so many employees and um, such strange and stressful um, employment conditions, because I mean, a two day turnaround and all sorts of crazy stuff, Amazon obviously is, is changing the world and, and business as we know it, capitalism really as we know it. I would have thought that there would have been some unionized protections on employees and it failed. And I, it just has me thinking, okay, that was an attempt, in my opinion, to try to slow the widening wealth gap, okay? And, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, and I don't wanna get into victim thinking or whatever, cause that's, at least here, that's not the purpose, okay? I, that, that's not helpful. But there is a widening gap from those in the top 1% or top 0.1% of wealth and earning and those in the bottom 50%, let's say, okay? And, um, and I'm not saying one's good or bad or whatever, but that, that gap, it needs to be healthy. And I'm saying it's getting stretched it, it, to an unhealthy level, extremely unhealthy level. And, um, and now I've done a video about this before, and there's a uh, Richard Cantillion, and I'm not pronouncing his name right, and he doesn't care because he's you know 250 years old. He, 250 years ago, this economist, Richard Cantillion, basically said when governments try to stimulate their money, they print, they print money and inject it into their economy trying to target certain, certain groups or certain agendas, it really doesn't necessarily work. Here's what actually works. That, that chunk of money, it's not water hitting an ice cube tray and very efficiently smooths out. It's more like honey hitting the ice cube tray. And it sort of, it will eventually spread and help everyone, but it's going to be concentrated for a while and slow moving. That concentration means, or is, asset prices immediately go up. So if you own a house or if you own stocks, when there's a bunch of money instantly created, those values go up, those prices go up. Number two, businesses that have very streamlined operations or can adapt very quickly to, to capture this new money, their valuations go up, they capture it, okay? Third, prices in general go up. Just overall prices as other businesses start adapting to, wow, there's a gazillion more dollars out there in the economy. We've got to increase our prices or prices are being increased upon us by our vendors. We've got to pass those price increases on. So that's the third phase as this honey spreads out. And then the fourth stage finally is the worker bee starts to see increased wages. But after, and this was, this was the economist's point, after they've had to suffer from higher asset prices, I can't buy a house, um, potentially higher, more demands or work stay or whatever, higher prices for everything else, okay? Then they finally get paid more. I see that at work. Now that's just, I, I see that is potentially what's happened during this pandemic as, as unprecedented amounts of stimulus has been created. Now we've got an even widening, uh, a bigger wealth gap. What do we do about it? Here are the three ideas currently being kicked around. And then I'm gonna share my three ideas that I would recommend to you, okay? So the three ideas currently being kicked around, number one, unionize. And, um, and again, I'm sort of surprised that the Amazon union attempt failed. I don't think, I, and I, again, I don't know all the legislation on this. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the last we hear of it because I don't think the tensions go away. Um, both my parents were in unions. And, and, and um, so I'm not pro, I'm not a, a, against. What I would tell you is employees in mass, 
need representation, need to have fair wages. Hopefully they're getting that from their direct supervisor, from their boss. Hopefully that's built into the business, into the budget for that business, hopefully. Um, to the extent that it's not, and there's some predatory stuff going on there, yeah, I mean, hopefully there's some sort of revolt. Everyone leaves or goes find a different job in smooth functioning capitalism. Hopefully that's what works. If not, and there needs to be some added protection, you know, if it's needed, I'm for it. But from a business standpoint, and we saw this with auto manufacturers, we've seen it in lots of places, when, when the world changes around you, businesses can't adapt quickly to survive. So you end up going through bankruptcy and then no one wins. There's this, there's a short-term sense of protection that unions can offer. Long-term though, if the business industry changes, that, that, that protection goes away with bankruptcy. So anyway, so unions, that's one idea, okay? And that's just a little banter for me. Second, we could have forced minimum wage increases. Now, I know there's a big debate about that as well. I don't want to, this video is not to debate that. I, I, there's obviously pros and cons. The pros are the folks that are, you know, working significantly hard at very low wages. That is not a sustainable wage. Um, long term, and and it hasn't kept up with inflation. But the biggest deal is, yeah, it's not a sustainable wage. But then on the other side, well, it's not really intended to be a sustainable wage. It's supposed to be uncomfortable because you're not supposed to stay at that skill level, at that income level forever. There should be enough discomfort for you to say, okay, let me go get some skills or find a different job so I can. And I know that's much much easier said than done, but there's that tension there. So again, there's pros and cons. Um, once again, I look at what if that's forced upon folks or, or businesses as a way to to help that gap. It, it's possible healthy businesses, you know, Apple's, Amazon's, those sorts of things who have the margin. Okay, fine. Um, and many of them have already said, okay, fine. We're we're just we're not going to wait. We're just going to increase price or increase wages. Walmart's done that, and so on. Um, but those businesses that don't have that margin would look and say, okay, well, forty hours a week at ten bucks an hour. Well, now. I have to pay you 15, I can't pay you any less than that, so you get 30 hours, that's it. You know, I, I, and, and you know, we're gonna have to figure that out. So I don't know if it quite gets the, the, the result that it might seem on the surface it would create. I don't know though, this video's not about that. So that's the second thing that's tried. The third thing that's being talked about and in inadvertent or maybe intentional ways is being introduced something called universal basic income. And I, I you know, to me, I, I just, I, I've said it in a recent video, I'd love to get paid for nothing. And as, as technology is redirecting money into very few people's hands, Jeff Bezos and, you know, Bill Gates and, and all, you know, all that, um, universal basic income is just a leveling to say, yeah, okay, if you're, if you didn't have the wherewithal, the skills or the fortune to, um, to start a tech development company and, and receive a concentration of wealth here, we're going to be giving you some money each and every week just for being awesome. And, um, and okay, you know, great. I don't know where that money comes from. Like it's gotta be a, I don't know, some sort of redistribution of wealth. I'm not that creative. Okay. Right now, what they're trying is, um, through tax credits, we'll pay you in advance. Okay, so through child tax credit, instead of getting a child tax credit on your tax return, we'll just pay you monthly. Um, unemployment, um, which we talked about just a couple days ago in a video, new unemployment system, we're just gonna give you more for a longer period of time. So if you're in, and it can be voluntary termination, you can leave your job and still collect unemployment. Those rules haven't been applied, or laws, that bill hasn't been passed into law yet, but that's what they're proposing. I think that's positioning ourselves to eventually just say, no, we're just going to give everyone a certain amount, universal basic income. To me, I don't think that actually solves the wealth gap, in my opinion. I don't think it does. Um, I think it potentially is a different way of printing more money, which could exacerbate the problem. So that's the, those are the three ways it appears as though our culture is trying to attack this, this wage gap, this widening wage gap. I don't know. I don't, I don't know which of those is best. I think they each have pros and cons, right? And, and, and so what I care about is you. I, I, care about, I care about you. Obviously, I want a level playing field. I want um, a, a, a culture that is cultivating for, for all peoples and all of that. But, but for you, you don't have direct control over what policymakers decide. 
you, no matter your opinion or your your you know what what you would suggest, you don't have control over the minimum wage debate or universal basic income. You don't. You have influence with your vote. Um, you don't have control. And so, what do you have control over? Well, this is how I would help you. Wherever you are in the wage gap, that spectrum, this is where I'd help you get as high as possible. Um, do three things. Number one, develop skills. Work on your skills. And now that, that could be skills that you trade in the marketplace for money, i.e., I know how to do these things. I, that affords me a job that pays X. Um, or I'm managing money in a certain way. I'm managing my finances. I have certain skills managing money, and therefore that gives me um, freedom that I, I don't have to go out and earn as much as possible. I can live on less. Something like that. Okay, so develop skills. Develop skills. I know that's loosey goosey. I know that's less, but I, that's a habit that I'd encourage you develop skills. Second, and my favorite, this is you know, equally uh, unpopular, but, um, but do more today. Do more today than what you're getting paid for today. I believe, contrary to maybe sports and entertainment, I believe most jobs, the, the pay follows the work. Meaning, you know, you don't get a big signing bonus like the first pick in the NFL draft and then have to go perform to live up to it. The rest of us have to perform and then get paid after we perform. So uh, that's just my thinking. So if you're struggling because I'm not, I don't, I'm not getting paid enough to, to have everything work here. I need, I need higher, I need to make more. It, there's likely some atrocities or some, some stress at your employment and you wish things were a little bit better. It takes a humble person to just kind of bite down, bear down on that and say, nope, I'm gonna give even more. I'm gonna invest even more. I'm gonna contribute even more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more today than what I'm even getting paid for because that's the way that you add even more and more value to your company and therefore when there's contractions, the company would say, I, we can't get rid of Jeff. I mean, look at everything Jeff's doing. And then your company also recognizes, oh my goodness, Jeff is invaluable. We gotta pay him more so that he doesn't leave or, or she doesn't leave, whatever, okay? And then third, for some of you, your way to, to um, influence where you stand on the wage gap, something you can control is if you've developed more skills at your job and you're still not getting paid more, if you're doing more today than you're getting paid for today and still you're not receiving advancement, maybe the other thing you can control is get a different job or get another job. Get a different job, get another job. And, and those aren't fun, I mean, those are changes, and especially getting another job. But maybe developing skills that are, that you know, that you can trade efficiently for a side hustle. That, you know, that, that kind of term is in vogue. Something like that. If you, I, so all of this is take control as much as you possibly can today, not, you know, on a big level, but take the small step control, the habit control to, influence as much as possible where you fit along that wealth gap or wage gap spectrum, okay? Focus on value, how you can add more value to the company. Do more for your company today, do more for your job than what you're getting paid for today to assure yourself raises in the future. Potentially, if that's still not working, change jobs, get a second job, all right? Work with your certified financial planner on that because some of this stuff, uh, wage pressure and all of that means well, it's, you have that because I have certain lifestyle goals or savings goals or, or, or certain financial goals that I need to achieve with higher wages. Talk to your certified financial planner. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Maybe there are other creative ways for you to reach those financial goals with, with less stress on how much exactly you're making. Or maybe they have some insight that, you know what, I work with other people that do the same thing as you and they get paid X amount more. You should go talk to them, okay? So work with your CFP. If you don't have a CFP on your team, talk to one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with a K. Why is it money show? You can find us there too. Or just send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next Y step in your financial life.